What is going on everybody? Just wanna thank all of you that are subscribed now. We're up to 5,000 subscribers, which is just insane. My goal this year is to hit 15,000. We're already a third of the way there, which is awesome. So thank you all for helping me out and reaching that milestone. As you can see, I'm kinda of starting to get my studio together here so I can have more high quality videos and have a better shooting area. Still working on the echo a little bit, so you'll probably hear a little bit of that during this video, but I'm working on it. So to celebrate, I figured we could answer some questions from social media that you guys submitted, as well as do a little giveaway, which I'll talk about at the end here. So let's get right into it. Uh, first question was from Instagram, thoughts on the 1030 port because no ground for charging. Tesla has an adapter for it. Um, I actually had to look this up because I was curious. So the, the 1030 is a 240 volts uh, plug. So typically on plugs, you've got the hot line, you've got the neutral line, and you've got a ground. So the hot is where the current comes through, the neutral is where the current returns, and then the ground is just for safety. So if there's any kind of short or anything, it goes through the ground instead of keeping the circuit running. That's very basic explanation, don't have time to get into all the, all the details of it. But so on a 240 volt plug, you've got two hot lines. You've got one 120 volt hot line, and you've got another 120 volt hot line. And typically you have a neutral for that return current and you've got a ground for safety. Whereas on this NEMA 1030, you've got two hot lines, one 120, another 120, and then you've only got a neutral. You don't have a ground on this circuit, which can be a little unsafe if there's any sort of fault on there. So you can charge it this way. Obviously Tesla has an adapter for it, so it can be done, but generally I don't think it's the safest. And if you can avoid it, it's probably smart to do so. Not saying that you're gonna like electrocute yourself by charging on that outlet, but it's it could happen theoretically. So probably best to avoid it if possible. Another question from Instagram, if you could have any car that wasn't electric, what would you pick? Um, I had a tough time come up, coming up with this. I'm assuming there's no like financial limits or anything on this. So I went with probably what would be like a fun hyper car to drive. I'm thinking either a McLaren or a Koenigsegg. I really like both of those vehicles and both of those classes of vehicles. I haven't ever driven one, but they look really fun to drive and just fun to own, honestly. I probably would lean towards the Koenigsegg. I've got this weird obsession with like car doors. Like I think it's really cool how the Koenigsegg doors are, how they kind of like flip vertically. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Is Tesla gonna make a minivan? That's, that's a good question. This actually came up on the Tesla earnings call recently and Tesla got a question from one of the investors that asked, is Tesla ever gonna make a delivery van? Cause a lot of companies are starting to move into that space and Tesla definitely could be a big player in that space. But the biggest constraint, at least from Tesla's end, is batteries. They don't have enough batteries to make all the models of cars they want to. They're very focused on Model 3 and Y production. They're trying to ramp up their other vehicles right now, but batteries are the biggest constraint. Trying to build those faster and more sustainably is hard for them right now. So I think the, eventually they'll release a minivan. I think the best option in the minivan class per se is the Model X, but that's a, out of a lot of people's price ranges and is way too expensive compared to other minivans on the market. So I think it'll happen eventually, just not it's not in the near future for Tesla. What inspired you to get into engineering? This is a great question actually. I've just hung my plaque on the wall, so something I'm very proud of accomplishing. And I think the biggest thing that, uh, inspired me to get into engineering is just seeing all of the things that engineering can, can accomplish. The fact that you can go from literally an idea in your head to creating something magnificent and something amazing is what inspired me to get into engineering. You know, I started as a kid building Legos and stuff and creating things out of Legos and now I've moved on to building bigger and better things and, and that's really amazing. And that even carries over to what I do here. The fact that I can start with a video idea and create a video based on something that started in my head is pretty cool. Good books or websites for EVs? Well, self-plug this channel right here. I've got a whole uh, playlist on EV education topics. I did a lot of videos in the past year talking about just EVs in general. What is charging? How fast can you charge? All that kind of basic stuff. And I've kind of moved on from that because I feel like I've covered a lot of the basic stuff around EVs, but those videos are still up on my channel. You can go watch them, lots of good info there. Video quality might not be as high because I was still learning a lot, but all of the information in there is still good. That's actually where I learned a lot of about EVs is on YouTube. There's a lot of great creators here that are doing the same kind of thing I am, talking about electric vehicles, 
Fully Charged is a great channel. I know a lot of people really enjoy that because it's more of like a TV show. The production quality is excellent. But in terms of other websites, I will link some down below. There's a lot that I use for sources and research for my different videos. If you're looking for an actual book that you can sit down and read, I actually just had a chat with an author of an EV book and a lot of the information he's been talking about is awesome. A lot of the information he covered uh, in our chat was is also in the book and uh, all the website link down below, but his book is called The Arrival of the Electric Car. It covers everything you need to know about electric cars, what EVs are on the market right now, uh, what to expect from the future of EVs, all that sort of stuff. So I will have that, that link down below if you want to check his book out. Also, I'm thinking about having him on the channel for a collab video to maybe talk about his book or other topics around electric vehicles. So hit that like button if you want to see that. Would you ever consider having future subscribers who get Teslas collab with you and feature in videos? Definitely. <laughs> I would love to do that. Uh, love chatting with other creators and possibly collabing on videos. I have been thinking about doing a sort of interview type series where I go visit people with electric vehicles, talk about their setup, what got them into electric vehicles, and the hopes that it convinces other people to also buy electric vehicles and show that you can live with an EV in a lot of different situations. So let me know your thoughts on that. I think that'd be a pretty cool series here on the channel. Probably have to wait till the summer till it, it warms up here and uh, COVID starts to kind of fade away. So, uh, but that's something I do want to do in the future. Thoughts on the X slash S refresh. I am a big fan of this. I think the X and S has a, had a very old design and Tesla clearly needed to refresh it. I know Elon has talked about just doing incremental changes over time, but I don't think those were enough. It really just needed a complete facelift. So I'm a big fan of these changes. I think all of them are, are noticeable improvements over the previous model and also kind of streamlines their whole uh, vehicle lineup now. I think they're all kind of built the same way and use similar parts, even like things down to the, the door switch to open and close the doors now on the S and X are the same as the Model 3. They've all got that horizontal screen now, which I like a lot better. A lot of just big changes I think were smart for Tesla. And I also think a lot of the changes they made are big enough to separate the Model 3 and S and the, the Model Y and the Model X enough that they're in separate vehicle classes. I think you're getting a lot more out of the Model S now at that higher price than you would get out of the Model 3. So yeah, I, I think it's a good move. Thoughts on the Cybertruck? Well, if you caught my video, uh, one of my previous Q and A's, I actually reserved a Cybertruck and I'm really not sure what my plans are for it right now. If I even will take delivery, I've been thinking about kind of what I want to do in the future with EVs. I think it would be fun to do an EV rental service here in Columbus. So if people are visiting town or traveling, they can rent an EV to try out or even just potential owners can rent an EV for the day and check it out. So I might start kind of start that business with the Cybertruck, but I think it's it's a very interesting vehicle. It definitely is very polarizing, but I think it will definitely change the way we think about trucks. I think people will see it and realize there are endless possibilities with a truck that you can do, not only with EVs, but with gas trucks too, honestly. So I'm glad Tesla went with such a radical design here to really, really separate themselves from the competition. I've also heard that Tesla is eventually gonna do a regular truck, like just a regular plain, more plain looking, I guess, pickup truck. Um, that is part of the reason they called it the Cybertruck and not the Tesla truck. So I'll be interested to see where, where it goes from there. My friend Brandon asked, if you haven't uh, checked out my podcast with Brandon, I'll have that link down below as well. When you look back at your progress you've made on your channel, what's the area you've improved on that you're incredibly proud of? I think uh, just seeing this setup right now, I think the production quality on my channel has gotten a lot better. I started YouTube with literally my phone and Windows Movie Maker, like the, the bare bones of what you need to start a channel. Uh, moved on to iMovie from there and it's continued to grow. I'm now shooting on an actual DSLR with like a good mic on there. Um, I've got a decent looking set behind me. I've got a better video editing program now and can do a lot of, a lot of better stuff. So hopefully you guys have noticed the, the increase in production value. Um, it's something I'm continuing to work on not only to make my videos more enjoyable, but also better to watch uh, for you guys. What are the things you wish you had done differently with your Tesla from when you first ordered your Model 3 to today? Anything from picking a color, color wheel, interior style, uh, choosing and applying PPF, ordering certain upgrades, accessories, or avoiding certain, certain actions. 
Um, I think probably the biggest thing um, that I honestly haven't been able to avoid is maybe wait until I had a better charging situation at home. I wasn't anticipating working from home for this long and charging has been a little, di little bit difficult. I've made a couple videos about that and how I've dealt without, uh, with living without a home charger. Um, and it, it, obviously it can be done. It's not the most convenient thing, um, but I'm definitely looking forward to get ba getting back in the office and getting, getting access to charging again, which isn't really a car thing. It's more of a charging thing. I guess with my car, one thing I've been wanting to do is install a PPF on the whole thing. I really like the, the Expel Stealth PPF. I think that looks awesome. It gives it this kind of matte finish, but that's also like really expensive and I'm hoping maybe at some point somebody could maybe sponsor that or I can shoot a video on them installing it to show off how good it is. But, but other than that, as like YouTube has gone on, I wanna show off more upgrades to the car. That's kind of another whole series I'm doing. So I just got the wheels from Test Bros, be doing a video on those, getting those installed. Uh, doing a Chrome delete. That's another thing I wanted to do. I really dislike the Chrome now, Look, seeing the new Model 3s. I really don't think it looks great. So uh, I really want to get that Chrome delete done soon. What point and or features would have you upgrade your car or is it more of once you have issues, age, miles, range loss? Um, quite honestly, when I bought the Model 3, my plan is to keep it till it dies. So if that's 100,000 miles or 200,000 miles, I'm going to keep driving the car till it runs into the ground, honestly. Um, this is a car, I know being an EV, the maintenance isn't going to be as bad. It's going to have a very long life, especially with the motors and such. I think the only point I would replace it is if the batteries are out of warranty, they need replaced, and I don't have enough range to drive the way I want to. That would probably be the only way that I would replace the car. And even at that point, if the batteries were cheap enough to replace versus buying a new car, that's probably the route I would go. Because kind of on a bigger financial scale of things, buying a car is not a great investment. They depreciate in value. So buying another car just because my, my one currently doesn't work as good as the latest model, it's not really worth it for me to buy a new car. With that being said, obviously I've got a reservation down on a Cybertruck. I eventually want to get to the point where I can have multiple cars for this channel. I think the Model 3 will stay as my daily driver, but if YouTube works out, I'd love to get more cars and show off more EVs on the channel. That is definitely something I want to do. But for now, I am sticking with the Model 3. Lots of good questions there. Thank you to everybody that submitted a question. Let's talk about that giveaway now. So. You may know that I won a Test Bros giveaway and they sent me some stuff that I honestly don't need because I've already got it done on my car. So I'm gonna be giving a couple of those away plus a bonus thing here. So in this giveaway, you're gonna get three things. First off, you're gonna get the Tesla uh, center console wrap. Obviously I've already got it done on my car and I don't need this one. So I'm gonna ship this out to one of you. So that is the first thing. Number two is the screen protector. It's a matte one, which I, I really enjoy. I did a whole video installing mine. This one is specifically from Test Bros. So I'm assuming theirs is gonna be very similar quality to what I have, um, and I don't need to replace it. So I'm gonna be shipping this out as well. And the last thing, at battery day, you might've noticed that I got a little Model 3 right there. So I got a little Model 3 and this is actually what they gave away to Model 3 reservation holders back when they were uh, were shipping out the initial Model 3s. I think they just had a bunch left over and they are now giving those away at different Tesla events and stuff. But it's basically like a little, I think 143rd scale Model 3. Looks really cool. Um, good little desk piece there. So I'm going to be shipping that out as well as part of the giveaway. Oh, I just realized this was in here. So here's a discount code for Tesla.com. I'll just leave this up on the screen and any of you guys are welcome to use it. I completely forgot this was in here. <laughs> so you'll get all three of those, the screen protector, the mini model three, and the center console wrap. You guys will get all of those if you win the giveaway. So the link to enter is down in the description. Thank you all again for 5,000 subscribers. That is all for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.